All right, Ben Bang, welcome to the Dave Portnoy Show with Eddie and Company, presented by Trade Zero. Dave, you're a big Trade Zero guy. Yeah, I'm a huge Trade Zero guy. Uh, we're about flat right now. I've been using it. Summer's here. Stock market doesn't take any time off. Everyone knows that. Uh, to celebrate summer, Trade Zero is giving all new users to sign up at tradezero.us slash Dave. Three months free of Pro, $177 value, and a $100 Drizzly alcohol delivery gift card to fuel your summer for total value of $277. Initial account minimum, $2,500. do not just trade, trade zero. Right now, you got, uh, you got AMC, short squeeze, that's ripping, and uh, GameStop looks like it's up again. So stock market is always crazy. If you're involved in those, you can get shut off at any time because uh, Robinhood doesn't play by the rules. Trade zero does. Do you have any of those still? No, I don't. I have just the score, SCR, in my private, and it's getting smoked. Uh, it was, I'm down like 50% on it, but what are you going to do? How's Buzz doing? Buzz is like flat. It's like right where it started, basically. Interesting. Well, regardless, go get Trade Zero. Uh, all right, so we had a show on Friday. We aired with Whitney, a long episode. Uh, so I don't know. It might be a little shorter today, but regardless, we got stuff to talk about. Frankie Borelli coming on later. Uh, certified maniac at this point, right? I mean, he <laughs> is, but that's nothing new. And streams work when you have legit psychos. And Marina doesn't act the way that Frankie does necessarily, but she's every bit the psycho that he is. Oh, yeah. So you have two people who, who live and die with a team. I would argue, I don't know, Borelli, Marina, White Sox Dave, Maybe the three craziest fans of a specific team. I mean, I the first time Frankie, I remember the first time I noticed it, we were traveling and he was sitting at the it was Yankees playoffs. And he's a Yankee fan, but nothing like he is with the Islanders. And he was sitting in the corner streaming on his phone a preseason Islanders game. I'm like, what are you doing, dude? That's when I realized. And then I, he told me more a story. You know, he used to go to every game. He he never he missed like his proms and stuff to go to regular season Islanders games where they weren't making the playoffs. He held the, the DP sign kid. He had a nickname for that going to DPHRO. Like he used to go into an empty Coliseum and film the other team practicing and take notes. I mean, he's a psycho. He's a so, psycho. Yeah. You have a fan like that. And then Marina, who's the same. That's how you create an electric factory. Big time. Big time. If Marina's in the office, you should bring her in too. Uh, so if she's there, I don't know if anybody's there. Bring her in with Frankie. That'd be good. Um, you're right. And White Sox Dave's right there, too. The White Sox had an off day, like, last Thursday. And he's like, I'd sacrifice any member of Barstool Chicago for the White Sox to play today. It's like, dude, there's 162 of these. Like, <laughs> yeah. you, could, you could miss a night. Um, they're nuts. Yeah, they're, no, they're nuts. So it'll be good to talk about. I, even Frankie, I remember coming back from Rough and Round in West Virginia in the boondocks. <laughs> regular season game. We had he, he was driving so erratically trying to watch the game on his phone. We had to pull over and I had to drive so he could watch it. I mean, he's nuts. He made you drive? Yeah. How often well, does I wasn't that happen? Die in the boondocks. <laughs> That's great. Uh, I mean, speaking of the boondocks, big news of the weekend, obviously, it was the concert on Friday uh, where, I mean, I wouldn't say it was the boondocks, but it was north, very north of Indianapolis. Definitely not the boondocks. Yeah. Machine Gun Kelly, Diplo. Uh, I mean, where did it even start? I guess right. It, it was overall. What was your what was your takeaway from the weekend and the party? I mean, it was a great event. It was a great event. Obviously, uh, I, well, not obviously. I think at the time it was maybe the biggest like concert uh, post COVID or something like that. So six thousand people um, or five thousand people shoulder to shoulder, and it was a fun event. Put on a great show. Uh, Machine Gun Kelly was great. Uh, obviously, Megan Fox came out. That made, like, national news. It was a great time. It was a packed, great time. So I think we were on the same boat. I didn't know a single song he sang before I went into that. Did you? No, not really. But I thought he was really good. Yeah, it was good. He was, he was a very good performer. Yeah, I, I, I really enjoyed his performance big time. And uh, other than that, there, were some, there was a nice Rico moment. We saw a napkin toss live. We saw a whistle live. So... Uh, what would you give those on the rating scale? It was funny to see. Rico said to me, it's the happiest he's ever been in his life. That's a direct quote. What? Yeah, he's like, this is the happiest I've ever been in my life. How did you respond to that? I just kind of looked at him. 
that's the uh, coming off like it's been chaos for that guy lately. Like well, you said, he, Friday. I mean, another psychopath. So he goes up and down and up and down and up and down. <laughs> I mean, what you did to him, what you did was wrong. I'll say that it was very the, the DJs in my car remix with Kirk. And I didn't Duke. make that. <laughs> I don't know that? where that came from. I, so I, I honestly don't know where that came from. I don't know who made that. It wasn't Millmore. Millmore's would be way like better looking. Like that was that was clumsily made. <laughs> that was that was wrong. I, whoever made it. Whoever I I agree. That's why I posted it. Yeah, that's what Rico texts me. He goes, I told him he's like, thanks a lot, Dave. Never been happier. And. uh he goes, yeah. After you said you hope the plane goes down with Big Cat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He he wished that that plane landed in a crash. <laughs> um, how was the pizza review with Machine Gun Kelly? He was an interesting cat, but uh, it was good. I saw a funny comment on it because I guess Machine Gun Kelly never used to be like this. What what would you call his? His look, punk? Yeah, I would say. And someone's like, I've always wondered why Machine Gun Kelly, wh how he went from just like straight rapper to punk. I've never heard anyone ask him. And then like Dave is the first person like, yo, when did you just decide to become punk? I mean, he had nails, like these spikes coming out of his nails and shit. But he was a good sport. Um, you know, he was a good sport. And it, it, both guys, Diplo did a pizza review like to himself and he did some publicity. So it, it that concert really, I don't think could have gone smoother or better. So will this be a new model when it comes to opening states? The as I said, it couldn't have gone better. The signups, I thought we'd get more. Like we, a lot of people did do it to get the tickets, and you could have rigged it to get a free ticket. Uh, it, it will vary state to state. How we do it will vary on what we think the timing is. Like Indy Five Hundred made sense for us to do it that way. Um, it could, it could. I'm not sure. Did you view coming in that Indiana would be a harder state? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Just because they've had other promotions there. And they've already there. had other promotions. McAfee's there. I, I like Penn originally wanted to launch that first. And I had heavy input into not doing that first. I've had heavy input to a bunch of states that I think if, you know, Dan and I weren't there to be like, hey, maybe don't do it that way. Penn would still be swimming around in a fishbowl. I wonder how much you clowning on them all the time. Clowning on who? Like, like the, the Colts and like the Flake Gate and Peyton Man. I wonder how much no, that's No, that doesn't like, matter. That doesn't, no. no. You don't think so? They're like, no. oh, fuck this guy? No, 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 no. Definitely I, There's not. some people for sure. Do you see, it was 6,000 people there, Eddie. Well, I, if I went on stage, by if I went on stage, Eddie, the crowd would have, it would have equaled any cheer of the night. There's, like people trying to get chance going on the side, just looking. Any, come on. There's definitely people, not not at the concert. I'm saying like in the state of Indiana no. who were like, oh, no. this guy like no. we used to give no. it to the Colts. Nah. Nah. You don't think there's no one? No. Nah. That's crazy. You're that's, crazy. That's false. You're false. That's false. <laughs> You're uh, false. There, was a, there was a wristband situation. We got gassed, a bunch of us. Uh, that was unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, what the fuck, Paul? I what? will say, though. What's the problem? You, you just gassed the fuck out of half of us. In what I will say, he, he, yeah, he fucked. Like, he didn't let, like, Glenny Balls, you. I thought you guys – so, the situation, we walk in, and I was with Silvana um, and her sister and a friend, and it was me, and we walked in, and, and we all came together and separated. So, like, you, Spider, I don't know, Kareem, who else? Some, Marty. All got put in the back, and then I went to, like, the best table in the house – I didn't realize that happened. I don't know what happened to you. I think Gaz maybe at one point is like, can they come over? Like, yeah, of course, Barcelona people can come over. Now, I will say, and I think I'll give Paul some credit, which I don't do here. He's like, I want to be close because whoever was there, like Kareem or whoever, just started letting anybody into that section. And I don't want anybody. That, there were randos in there because once you people start drinking and balls is inviting girls and Korean, it's like, what are these people? I don't know who these people are. Yeah. Get them out of here. So it is a fine line. Like you can, yeah, all Barcelona people, but like Kareem, you can't bring people in. 
balls. You can't like if you want to go hang out with them, go hang out, but don't bring randos into my section. So that was kind of the thinking. We had a big bar stool section where you could have like 30 or 40 people and that would happen. It would get overrun and then we'd have a backup other section where Dave could get away and have his like private showing. And then you could always make the call and that's what you did. And then you Yeah, know. but right. So people have to like be like Gaz at one point like Kareem was getting loose with his like producer card, just like anybody's coming in there. Like, no, that I don't know the next time we have one of these, that won't be the case. Like if you're in the set, come come hang out, Barstool. You'll have very strict orders. Like you're not bringing in rent. Like my area is not to try to help people get laid. My area is so I keep riffraff away. It was Unless just funny because we pulled up and then there was we all got green wristbands like me, Glenny, and uh, like, I didn't know. <laughs> as we we're walking into the back, somebody's like, "Yeah, they're just meeting us on the other side." No, no, and then you guys all got like a like an orange, and you guys went there. Yeah, was, that wasn't me. It was like GA versus VIP, and Dave was VIP, and you were GA. Yes, <laughs> it was it was it was funny. Wasn't my fault, Eddie. It's all right. You, you we made it right. We made it right. What about the picture of Paul with the uh, with the girl over there? He's doing, working hard. Well, yeah, that was Silvana's friend. <laughs> I know, but and, uh, it did. It was appropriate. I was impressed, Paul. You were working hard. I was running all over the place. That that timing of that picture was like right when they showed up, said hi, and then uh, was he was working hard. Except when I saw a police escort for uh, what was it, like pins, like or or like <laughs> what well, paper one of, clips? One, like the girl must have needed her outfit. Gaz had a police escort working so hard to bring like safety pins to this girl. Dude, Silvana's the queen now. I got to take care of her was, and her, no, 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 and no. her people. It I know. And her pe- her it wasn't Silvana. Her it was her friend. Happy wife, happy life. in that picture with. If Silvana dead or alive, that didn't matter that the safety pins were being brought at that moment. <laughs> Silvana's hair could have been on fire. You wouldn't have cared about that. It was safety pins to the other girl. It was a great caught red-handed picture for Paul. And like he said, it was like that was like the one time he stopped. It reminded me of when Pete, we were at the Super Bowl and Camby was down. The app wasn't working. And he, <laughs> he turned around and looked at Pete. He's got a slice of pizza in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it was just perfect timing. Um, all right, Borelli and uh, Marina are in here. Uh, let's do Black Rifle and then we'll get into it. Is that cool? Sure. Black Rifle Coffee. We had that at the studio in Indiana. Uh, it is a veteran-owned coffee company. Veterans Day, obviously, was just yesterday, so great time to do it. They import the highest quality coffee beans all over the world, roast five days a week at our facilities in Manchester, Tennessee, Salt Lake City, Utah. Um, they're continually researching, getting the best coffee you can get. The best way to enjoy Black Rifle Coffee is joining the coffee club. You pick the perfect roast, how much, and when you want to deliver to your door. Take care of the rest. Free to sign up. Free shipping, discount on partner brands, early access to new products and club exclusive products. Go to blackriflecoffee.com slash Dave. Use the code Dave today. Get the freshest coffee America shipped to you. No better time to do it the day after Memorial Day. All right. Welcome on the Maniacs, Marina, Frankie. How are you both doing uh, today this morning? What's going on? Feeling great, Eddie. Feeling great. So the series is shifting now, Eddie, to Boston. Where are you going? Do you have a spot yet? No, we're going to figure out now. We were trying to do Tony's, which is Elio's oh, spot, but it's really not set up adequately for a stream. The way the bar is, it's super thin. So we're figuring it out now. Um, the plan was originally to do all seven at Pirelli's, but then watching's like, that's totally unfair. So we have to rotate. Huh. We'll rotate with the series. We'll go back and forth the series. I think Frankie's going to be alone in Boston. Though. Although I did see somebody tweeted at me like Islanders Club of Boston or something, and they're like, we'll go wherever this thing is going. So maybe I'll have a couple Isles fans. Yeah. I mean, splitting up me and my dad's tough because, like, that's what we've been doing for two years. But, you know, we'll persevere. Borelli's was a little too loud for the Boston crew, so we're shipping up to Boston What do you mean you've been doing it for two years? Well, like, that's how this started. I was, I've been ever No, no, no. It started uh, started 20 years ago, us doing this. Well, no, I'm saying with me and my dad watching them. On the live stream, on Barstool, right. Oh, yeah, well. No, I was doing this on my own. I was doing this on my Twitter with my dad, you know, knowing. Right, Uh, for Barstool, right? Sure. Yeah. Well, no, my point was, like, no one cared about the Islanders, like, up until now, but that's fine. Like, now it's Islanders Bruins, and... Well, I mean, no one cared about you. So, I mean, it's like... I, I'm I not mean, disagreeing people with care. that You're an all. Islanders fan. You're an Islanders fan for sure. So that you are a crazy Islanders fan, and, and people got to know you. So, yes, they want to watch, but it's only fair to go back and forth. Yeah, that's fine. 
I, I'm not complaining about that. Just, I think it, your heart broke a little bit. It's a little bit. That it's it's fine though. Like you know. It, do you think seven games should just be all Islander fans in the back and no Bruins? Well, fans? no, I don't. I, that was the plan originally. I just think that you saw that it was awesome, and now we're just changing it. Well, it can't be seven straight or whatever the series is. Like all, I, that's unfair to Boston. I agree with that. I'm fine with going. It's just I wish my dad could come with because I think that Me adds too. to the charm. Like that's the only reason I said that is like we've well, been doing that. Yeah, anymore. I mean, at least on the bright side, he still has a restaurant. Yes, yes. Thank you for that. Appreciate that. I yeah. can't tell if this is Bruins Dave or if you're just being mean to Frank. I think it's, I'm being mean. Like I think it's the latter a little bit, but that's okay. I'm taking it. <laughs> Any chance you're going like, to gr- like Any- my my whole point is like if I just like didn't show my Islanders fandom, I'd just be going to the Coliseum like on Thursday watching it. You know what I mean? Like because totally. of how big it's gotten and like how cool it is now. Now yeah. it's like you've I taken mean, me away from the Coliseum, which is fine. Right. But had I, mean, I just Big like, Cat Big Cat was in New York for right. Game Seven of the World Series. Right. That's which just all, right. That's what we do. Yeah, did, that's what we do. I get it. I totally get it. Did Grinnell throw his hat in for a place to... Uh... Yeah, Grinnell is like, hey, I know a place on Friend Street that can do it. Uh, uh, let me read. <laughs> that response <this> was brutal. <laughs> text back to... Uh, oh, no. And, and who knows? But so um, let's see. Oh, and Whitney wants to go. That, that's coming. It's going to be Frankie versus the world there. I'm sure Rear Admiral will show up. Um, I offered to get him help. I'm like, Stu, can you do it? He can't. Uh, oh, Stu's not going? Nope. When oh. Stu walked in yesterday, I like my heart sank because the place <laughs> erupted. Like, no, like the streams just like, so good with him on, man. It was so good. <laughs> what are right. you screaming? Fuck. Oh. <laughs> let's let's see what we got. Uh, I said I I'm trying to get Tony's Pizza, Elio, and then Grinelli said also know a nice spot on Friend Street if Elio can't. And I said, is that the place one of the owners called me a scumbag and told Gaz to watch his back because eventually I'd stab him in the back? Oh, no. He's like, yeah, that may be the place. What better way to show him who's boss than fill in the bar? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's you got to go back and forth. It's only fair. It, it, it's literally the only thing fair to do. Because it's easier for us to stay stay there because all the equipment and everything. But I mean, come on, it, it we're a Boston thing first. You got to give it. You got to go back and forth. Yeah. Can your dad travel there, Frankie? It's just it's like it's an Islander game at home. It's tough. Like yeah. you take him away from the preparation, and, and the restaurant's just gonna fit. Like I don't know how they could possibly run it. Like he could probably get away for the game, like he usually does for the stream. But it's the nine o'clock in the morning till six o'clock that they'll be screwed. So he he wishes he literally was like he was down. I called him. He's like, oh fuck. He's like, I'll try and figure it out. But I'm like, Dad, don't stress. He'll end up like having a heart attack. Yeah, no, I wasn't expecting him to be able to go. I mean, I would love for him to be able to go, but I wasn't expecting it. But the, it just – it's not fair to do them all at, no, at I, we, we set up – like we had – we the Islanders were going to let us stream from inside at the seats if we figured out the, the technology. So that would have been something cool. But I, I don't know if that's possible in the future. That would have been pretty awesome. You mean if – like two phones and streaming back to like a stream yard and you get both angles and someone switches I, I, I think it. it's I think it's you go back and forth. I mean the Braille setup is perfect. By the way, I didn't want to throw a shot at you either, Frankie. I'm not trying, but who, trots? Yeah. I mean that clip was unbelievable where he, he's like, oh, I saw the thing at Borelli's. They're going crazy. It's like, yeah, you also denied Frankie Borelli a pe- press pass. Oh, uh, Trotz didn't. It's uh, I thought he. I thought it was direct from him. I thought no, that's, that's what it was. No, that's Lou. That's Lou Lamorello. He keeps oh, a tight shit. Oh, you're right. You're he right. won't. He won't let out. them go on the podcast. He won't. He keeps a very. He doesn't let them grow beards during the season. So Got he it. doesn't want any outside media. He wants to control everything. He's a dictator in that aspect. But if he's going to bring us winning, then I'll, I'm all for it. Are you keeping pasta off the menu? You gotta. I mean. I, I think uh, Feidelberg tweeted. He goes, he thought it was a joke until my aunt was at was walking around the restaurant, legitimately telling people, "I'm sorry, but pasta's not an option tonight." Like when people would walk in, they would be like, "All right, just so you know, like there's no pasta on the menu tonight." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what was the max of the stream? It got pretty high. I think like someone said thirty thousand after the final goal. I don't know. But I think it was what, a concurrent. Was it that like 10, high? Yeah, it was like a, it was around like twelve thousand, like during overtime, just just concurrent. It was it was crazy. But, Are you like so dying, of, Frankie? Like, I mean, this is like a, this is a dream come true. I mean, it's just the Coliseum was never supposed to come back. Borelli's probably never would have came back. Like everything is just this is just extra time right now. 
They uh, are but, electric streams. You know, we had about 400 people at that restaurant last night. The outside patio had about 120 people that we didn't even know were out there. We set up TVs. I forgot about them. I went outside after the game. They're jumping around on tables and stuff. That was a part that I didn't even we didn't even see from where we were. That's awesome. I, uh, Marina, I'll tell you this, too. You have, like, a fucking Ronda Rousey just knocks someone oh, out yeah. face when, when something good happens. <laughs> well, I told Frankie, like, three times. There, there was this one dude in a cowboy hat who would just go in tap shoulders. And, like, it's a stressful game. I'm, like, telling myself to breathe. And I'm like, Frankie, if he touches me one more time, I'm going to sock him. Like, I, <laughs> like it's just like a Frankie, Mr. Belly, they can do whatever, whatever they want. But it's just, like, these random people behind me. I had That no- is a fine line. That's like with these streams when you let in random people and that, and we'll have to obviously Pirelli's is their restaurant, but in in Boston wherever we go, because like what makes the streams work? I mean, you can have the Frankie screaming at Grinelli or that stuff. No, no one's like actually going past that line, although it's very close. With random people, you you gotta you gotta make sure that line is kind of there. It is getting close. Grinelli is a physical fan watcher. I've watched streams and watched games with millions of people at this point. I've been going to games. I never physically touch anyone. First goal, he's putting me in a headlock. So it, it there was a chance, like at some point, where I was gonna have to retaliate and what like, did, swing what, on him. What did KFC text you? Oh, he's like, no matter. He goes, dude, I'm telling you this as a friend. No matter what happens in this, do not hit Marina. He's like, it will be very, very bad if somehow Marina catches it like a bow or something. So my dad kissed Marina on the forehead last <laughs> night after they scored a goal. I said, Dad, what'd you just do? He was like, I don't know. I got caught up. I got, I got caught up in the moment. He's like, I want the. He's like, he kissed her on the hair. It's like, what's going thing, on That's here? the thing with these streams is that like you don't like I. Like you could tell me that I did one thing, or you could tell me I did another thing. Like I think I just black out and I don't know what happens. Like, like there's just. People flying, elbows flying. Like <laughs> Frankie threw a meatball yesterday. Like it's just like it's that's just like playoff hockey in a nutshell, where it's like anything can happen. It's the bounce. Yeah, it definitely captures it. It's the, and the pictures, the still photos coming out of it all. Yeah, all that hilarious. kid was. Uh, that's the Islanders like uh, photographer for the Coliseum. So he just came down with his like professional camera and was snapping pictures. That added to the moment so much. You see this guy walking around getting pictures of Stu ripping his shirt off. It's just like it, it's chaos in there. Uh, we had to kick a couple people out. I mean, a couple people got sloppy. What were they? Well, doing? yeah, that's the problem with the live stream. Just like saying crazy shit behind, and this one kid was bad. Like, like he was just a bad apple, and we the whole place kicked him out, booing him, pushing him out into the street. He was crying in the parking lot. It was it was a scene at Pirelli's last night. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, KFC, what he said, it's it sounds crazy, but at the same time, you guys keep trying to one-up each other. Crowd surfing, headlocks, noogies, hat tosses. Like, don't hit Marina. That's a good rule of thumb. That's, that's everything in my head every single, <laughs> at every moment. It's just like, don't, like, swing your arm backwards. Uh, Grinelli They've caught a couple been with the Blues Incredible thing, games right. for a live stream, like the 3-1 to 3-3 to 4-3. I mean, that the swings and of motion have been crazy. Yeah. It's insane. It's absolutely insane. It takes years off your life. <laughs> Are you guys, like, do you guys both feel really good, like, going into the rest of the series? I mean, it's just, like, the bounces can go either way, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, Bruins had chances in overtime to end it, but they also, the Islanders had chances to not even send it, like, have it go to overtime. So it's just, like, I feel good. Um, I know the Bruins can be better. They had the worst period imaginable um, in game two in the second period. So, like, if they – are better i feel confident and like i'm going back to boston the bruins fans will be rowdy and so i'm fired up for that so i mean it's just it's the playoffs like just the bounces yeah it's crazy yeah i think as an islander fan you're on the road you just want to get one and you and that's i don't believe one. that shit at all for nhl really? nhl road hockey is like home road is the least impactful sport but there's, it's like one of the only sports where you actually have an advantage on, on at home where you because get the like last the, shift the last change yeah and that's huge for the Bruins. They get to put out pasta and their best line against whoever's stuck out there after an icing. They literally score because of that most, most of the time. I, it's almost like I wish Dave didn't have a horse in the race because it would be it would be fun to see him choose between two of his people. You know, it, I, I wish there was something, an aspect to that. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm clearly rooting for the Bruins. Um playoff dave full effect and i just to make sure playoff dave is full effect like i i troll down to philadelphia and like put a lot of money on the bruins just so there i can get like the actual juice 
to help you to help you watch it some more. Just just to get so I can get up to like a near marina level. <laughs> Are you going to be at any of the streams, Dave? Probably not. Well, it's too late for me to join a stream. I feel like to begin with because they already started with this crew and it's off. Although Grinelli, I will say. <laughs> Frankie body bagged him when he party. I mean, you can't party with the blues. You just can't. That's something that sticks with you forever. Forever. I can't get and head by the way, by the I was guy on a plane when, when that happened, so I couldn't hear what was Frankie was saying. I just saw him do that. His wires but just you, crossed. What's that? Frankie's wires just crossed. Well, he like put he me snapped. in a headlock. I'm like, and I'm thinking, like, this is the guy that we all were talking about partying with the blues. If anyone else put me in a headlock, maybe. Like, come on. He did party with the blues. That's tough. He claims it was two minutes he said hi to them at the same bar. He, just, he texted me that today. I don't think that's the truth. So I'll give him the benefit think. of the doubt, but I did go hard on him. I feel bad. <laughs> well, when he put you in the headlock, the triple headlock, you look you gave him. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was hilarious. Oh, man. Oh, it's been great. It's been great. But, no, I'm in Miami, Eddie. I'm in Miami for two weeks now because we have – I'm going – I. And people are going to be like, oh, boondoggle Miami. I didn't want to be in Miami, but we have the Logan Paul Mayweather fight, which we did a promo where I watched the fight with the winner go in the locker room, and then there's the TikTok shit for BFF. So I got to be here uh, for both those. I just came here for two weeks. Yeah, you, you did say you did not want to go. No, I don't. I, I would rather be back in New York. I don't right, do Miami uh, in the summer. It's too hot. All right. And anything else here, Dave, Frankie, Marina? No. So the plans just uh, keep it go like opposite cities. Yeah, rotate it. So Thursday, Saturday, Boston. Yep. Okay. There we go. Look out for the streams, and I Wait, guess it's been. Isn't great. today Tuesday? Isn't the game tomorrow? No, no they have an extra day. <clears throat> extra day off. Oh, Thursday. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yep. Good. All right. All right. Thanks, you maniacs. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> Um, all right, Dave. Let's uh, let's talk about Roman, and we'll get back into it. Yeah, hard dicks. <laughs> uh, Roman Swipes, clinically proven way to last longer in bed. Get your dick hard. Keep it hard. Roman Swipe sh uh, sh ship in discreet, unmarked packaging. Each swipe pack is small enough to hide in your wallet for whenever you need it. Go to GetRoman.com slash Dave. Get your first month of swipes for just 5 bucks when you choose a monthly plan. That's GetRoman.com slash Dave. Yeah. What do you think? You think it was mean for me to send to switch the venue? No, 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 no. I don't think so. I, I, you I got think, to. No, no. What? What? I think what Frankie was trying to say was he originally started those streams with just him and his dad and like the beer garden, and they were throwing the chairs on his head. Remember that? That was yeah, the, sure. Yeah, I think that's what he was saying. Like it started as just like a hey, this is an off like I don't know maybe his own kind of thing, and then now it's become such a well, big yeah, thing, built but. up. He's nuts, but the but without the Bruins. Any stream to really, truly be, like, as good as it can be, you need passion on both sides of the aisle. Yeah. Like, without the Bruins fans there going back and forth, it's still a very entertaining stream, but nowhere near what this is. And then I think, I mean, if the Islanders win the series, and I think Borelli's stream's on out, right? Correct, unless there's somehow, I don't, I'm trying to think we don't have I mean, anybody else. Tampa right? Bay, Hurricanes, nobody no. from that one, Vegas. Uh, Colorado. I mean, yeah, no. So it'd be Bruins here on out. This yeah. is just a situation where it's like, well, we have a lot of Bruins fans, and we're Boston blog still at heart. So you got to go back and forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it does. I hope Tony's place is able to happen though. That would be. Funny. I don't think it can. No, that would be very funny getting Elliot. It just mixed. isn't set up like to allow for it. Yeah. Um, couple last thing here on the party I have is uh, Tico Texas was upset she wasn't uh, invited. Yeah, I told her she can come from now on. Next big party, I'll throw her an invite. I would love for her to open. Imagine her in front of 6,000 people. That would be something. Electric. Yeah, that'd be something. I love that idea. Uh, I reached out to her to come on today, and she said yes, and then she just kind of went dark on me. That would have been something. Yeah. So, I mean, she'll be on at some point, but that's just the Tico. That's the Tico life, you know? You got you to gotta catch her. And, you know, that's, you just never know how it's going to go. Um, our So our Indy driver, he, he crashed in the practice. Is that right? Yeah, he crashed in the practice, but he did all right in the race. Okay. I saw that. I was like, oh, I don't know. how. I'm not a big race team. I don't know. And not only did it crash, it was just like on an open track with nobody near him. <laughs> I, chapped, I texted Chaps. I'm like, 
Oh, no, I actually cons. I'm like, what is his exact disability? Does he have hands? I guess he crashed into a wall. Yeah, with no. nobody around. He just lost his car, got loose. He just went right into the wall. He, his response was he's just trying to get airtime for the for the logo. So good response. Good, good response. Um, okay, so overall, happy with Indy 500 party. Everything went well. Yeah, yep. Um, this is probably more BFFs, but it, it made its rounds, and it got sent to me a lot. But Jeff Wittick. Uh, he's a YouTuber. He's like in the David Dobrik crew. He's spray painted over your he name. He was in the David Dobrik crew. He was. He's Now he's a solo act. Uh, he spray painted over your name on the uh, D'Amelio set. Yeah. Now, I don't know him well enough to care. But so I, I, I don't want to even say trashed him. I didn't know who he was. Never heard of him. On BFFs, they bring up these clips. Pretty routine. And he got like thrown off an excavator or whatever this thing that goes around and around. Yep. Doing a David Dobrik stunt and like broke his face. And then he's doing a documentary or something on the recovery. I'm like, oh, he's milking it. Or like that's part of the deal when you're doing content with David Dobrik. Like you may get your face broken. David Dobrik's like king of this shit. He's like one of his minions. Um, that's pretty much all he said. He freaked out. He actually called Josh. And borderline, like, threatened him, I guess. Like, Josh, he's like, he called me out. And then I've never talked to him or heard from him. I don't give a fuck about him. You want to go on and spray paint it? Like, a lot of people, like, he he's lost his golden goose, which is Dobrik. He needs to stay relevant. I don't know if that's true either. I just don't care about this guy. So, it's like some nobody spray paints over a name. All right, whatever. So, I, I was very... I'm not really into that whole world, YouTube and everything, but for some reason I got caught up in that story and I watched this whole kind of documentary. I'm pretty confident he's fucking around. With me? Yeah, I'm, I think he's just joking. Like, that's his humor. Like, he likes to fuck around. I think, I but think he's just why, I, from I've, again, have never talked to him, but Josh seemed to think he was kind of serious when he called him out of the blue. From what I know about it, from everything I've seen, this guy's just got that kind of humor where he's just never serious. And he always wants you to think he's serious. So, but that's that's just my read on the situation. So, do you think I'd like him? I think you would. He's got a pretty interesting story. He was like, uh, he got locked up for dealing drugs and shit. And uh, what do I like drug dealers? What well, was that? Mean? I mean, you know, would, hey Eddie, do you think I'd like this guy? Yeah, you would. He was locked up for dr dealing drugs. What? You, you didn't like the movie Blow? You don't like stories? You don't like you know? I like stories. You don't like redemption arcs? He's got a good story. That's what I said. And uh, so then he got involved with them and then kind of, you know, built his way up doing the YouTube. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I think I think you would like him, but I don't know. He, he's a different kind of humor, I guess. OK, but uh, yeah, we'll see. I'm just listening to BFFs. I'm sure you guys. I mean, it's, it's weird. Like. Certain things will get me like going and that that just didn't. I was like, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I think that's because this whole thing. I even watched when he talks about you and Josh on his show. And he was like, oh, he kept calling him a uh, little huddy. And he was like, oh, I was just fucking around. I was doing that on purpose. I know he's Josh, but, you know. Whatever. Well, I, no shit. Yeah. I mean, that's no shit. Well, he did he, he know who I was? Yeah, he, he follows you. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. Um, like, I'm not. But yeah, like, OK, go ahead. You're bound to run into him at some point, so. I, the only people I really worry about running into person is people I think are capable of just punching me. Yeah, I don't think you do that. I really yeah. think he's fucking around, but like I said, who knows? Uh, well, speaking of fucking around, how about you getting torched all over the joint for the tippy toe pictures? Eddie. Who was that picture with again? Uh, Compton and Taylor. Dead tall. Dude, the NFL guys. I what you what do people think I I don't realize when I go on tippy toes that it's gonna be caught? You want to talk about people like oh he's so in insecure he's so insecure I'm so secure that I'll still go on my tippy toes knowing people are gonna be like oh tippy toes tippy toes I know it and still do it I I say Green Bay power sweep I'm gonna do it till you stop it. It's it's funny too because it's one of those things where you've transcended barstool so much at this point, where everyone who's been following along with the program knows the joke, and everybody else is like toxic masculinity. What a fucking loser! What a you know he needs. To they called me toxic masculinity for oh, going yeah. on my toes. Oh yeah, that's a big thing. I know. Uh, what? Yeah. What do you mean that's a big thing? 
Oh, yeah. If you standing on your tippy toes is toxic man, masculinity. Yeah. So I remember I, you know, Kike Hernandez, he used to oh, be yeah, on the Dodgers. I know yeah. So he, uh, there's an interview of him and he's standing on a bucket. And, uh, you know, because the, the old Dale I, Arnold. Yeah. He was doing like, a, but he was doing a bit. He wasn't doing it, whatever. And everyone's like, oh, my God, would you believe toxic masculinity? He couldn't handle that. The reporter was taller than him. So that's a big was toxic. the reporter female. Yeah, she was. Oh, well, mm -hmm. I mean, these guys are males as far as I know, yeah. Taylor Luan and uh, Will Compton. They are, but still, it's just, you know. They're you... fucking tall. <laughs> the people don't. The people don't get the joke, and they just love to pile on those. Listen, if I stand next to tall people, I go on my tippy toes. Why not use every advantage you have? I'd be a fool not to go on my tippy toes. I'd, I'd be an uh, insecure person pussy for not going on my tippy toes why because people make fun of me no would, i do what i want to do would you ever consider getting the platforms no no jimmy so i can like dunk a basketball well just so you could get a couple no, inches no. you know no. like, like three no. inch platforms no i'm not trying to hide anything i'm just trying to make it look like uh, it, what's the difference between that and like editing a photo which i actually don't do well well, I mean, there's something, but what? I mean, you're you're legitimately moving up, like you're 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 pushing yourself up. I'm standing on my tippy toes. I guess so. You will continue to stand on your tippy toes from here. I'm on not going to be intimidated out of that. <laughs> I do love the za picture and the uh, the jockey picture too. Those are some of whoever made those. That's some of their best work. Yeah, Millmore. <laughs> um. Uh, last thing here for Dave's world. I have, uh, we, we had him on two weeks ago. Clay Travis is going to take over Limbaugh's spot. I guess not surprising. The, uh, well, a little surprising, not surprising. Maybe that's why he got the money. I listen, I won't wish that you go so deep into that political world. Everyone fucking hates you. Yeah. Some people love you, but it's a different lifestyle. Like even when I did that interview with Tucker Carlson, he's like, security all the time he can't go out Ugh, i won't want that you're out on that out do you feel like you're that far off of him though i mean i am anyone who has a brain knows i am but obviously i can stir emotion how often is it when you walk into a hater like when you walk into someone very rare you? almost everybody's nice in person i don't think i've ever seen it happened. I still remember in Boston when I was there for the Bruins game and a hater like chirped me from a car. Window down. Chirp. I actually have the video. And and I think he thought he was gonna be able to drive away. He did not think when he chirped me, I'd I'd stop in my tracks and get right up to the window with the camera and be like, What'd you say, buddy? And he's just sitting in traffic. He and he was did wanted no part of the smoke. You start, you start the fire, here comes the smoke, or vice versa, whichever way makes more sense. Did you ever post you, it? Yeah. I got to check this out. I don't think yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, I don't this. know how you find it, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I posted it. He's like, I don't want to be on camera. i like, what are you doing? It's like, well, maybe don't talk shit, big mouth. <laughs> Especially here. Like, you're not, you know, that's home turf. Yeah. You're not going nowhere. Um, all right, let's do, uh, let's talk about Zipper Crew, then we'll do Inside Barstool. ZipRecruiter. If you're a business owner who's hiring, you probably face a lot of challenges when it comes to finding the right person for your role. Not enough, not enough applicants, too many resumes to sort through, real problem. Not knowing where to post your job to reach right people. When you post on ZipRecruiter, uh, post a job on ZipRecruiter, it gets sent out to t 100 job sites with one click. Then ZipRecruiter's matching technology finds people the right skills, experience for your job, and actively invites them to apply. So while other companies overwhelm you with way too many options, ZipRecruiter finds you what you're looking for, the needle in the haystack. And right now, you can try ZipRecruiter for free at this web address, ZipRecruiter.com slash Barstool. Again, ZipRecruiter.com slash Barstool. Remember, go to this unique place, ZipRecruiter.com slash B-A-R-S-T-O-O-L. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire all right inside barstool jeff d low and others cry after the dozen 
<laughs> Listen. If you're not watching the YouTube, you got to see Dave's face after I said that. Listen. <laughs> I almost texted Jeff D. Lowe and said, great job with the dozen. And it was. He's done what I want and preach to every single person we hire. Find something new. Work your dick off at it. Make it work. Jeff D. Lowe is job for life category now. Set. He's proven himself. He went from like a nobody to somebody now. I'll, I'll You know what? He can work at his pay. He's done what you need to do. However, having said that, what the fuck are we crying about? We talking a trivia show. People crying. He's going through all this stuff in his life. Blah, blah, blah. Great job, Jeff D. Lowe. Stuff those tears back into your eye sockets. Like, really? We're crying? I had the same reaction. Like, uncomfortable Frank the Tank. Look at my watch. Get me out of here. Like, great job, Jeff D. Lowe. Great job. And by the way, I think I heard Minahan and Carabas kind of like making fun of it as well, which I expect from um, Minifan. But I think Carabas, when he stopped his radio show or something, had some grandiose speech too. I remember that. Like at the end, Riggs, when he's done with the Cousins, cried. I, If I was done with Barstool and gave a speech, I'd be like, yo, I'm out. That's it. I've been doing this shit for 20 years. Like we're crying over a one, season one of a trivia show? You put a lot of work Come on. in. Come on. What? He put a lot of work into it. I didn't say he didn't. Listen to what I said at the beginning. Very proud of him. Great job. a boy. Here for life. Proved yourself all the above. Get that crying shit out of here. There's no, it's, it's, it's uh, League of the Air. There's no crying at Barthes. There's no crying and you did trivia. You did your job. You did your job. What what crying moment at Barstool would you say is more, I, I guess, acceptable? That or Colby who left last week and his crying story? Well, I like the Colby crying story. <laughs> Eddie, do you know that story? <laughs> yeah, I do. And I, Colby's on my list. Uh, Colby left. He's a behind-the-scenes guy. Uh, now, here's another guy, Pete's Colby. Team. I reached out. I was like, is there anything I can do to get you to stay? Because he's a great employee. I just want to make sure. Sometimes I don't trust when things fall through, like Loud Sean or whatever. Like, he's been very good, does the job. So it's like, if we can convince you to stay, we should. But he can't. He's moving, and he had nothing but great things to say. Uh, yeah, but Col- the first time I met Colby was the incident with Loud Sean playing basketball, and he got Alfred, and... and Colby didn't like seeing his boss, his idol, Loud Sean, get Alfred, so he just started crying. It's a true story. So, so there was an argument he had with, with with another employee, and he was upset what the employee said to him about his family. Correct, and they just started crying, Colby. Yeah, it's a tough loss. That crying, Riggs is crying is outrageous, obviously, after he left that country club for like, <laughs> like a cancer patient got healed. Um, so is it Riggs or Jeff Lowe is the more preposterous? Which one's the more preposterous? I don't know what's more preposterous. It may be Riggs. But you love the Colby crying, to be clear. You like? Yes. 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 You like that smart it, quarterback? Well, I just like the fact that Loud Sean's his idol. <laughs> that's, like we said, that's my quarterback. Yeah, that, that's exactly what it was. That's why quarterback was Colby crying about Lau Sean just getting pushed around the ring. Uh, such inside bar. So I couldn't tell that story. We were laughing about it when he. I, I couldn't get through telling that story like 50 times without tears coming into my Well, eyes. you were tweeting. We had just wrapped up the show last week, and you were tweeting, and you're like, what's going on? This guy cried, and people were texting me I'm like, yo, dude, why is Dave being kind of mean on Twitter? I was like, just for the record. And I texted Colby, like, for the record. Dave like loves you. He loves the moment. He's laughing his ass off talking about the whole Loud Sean incident. So. Yeah, well, Loud Sean got bullied, and and Colby cried because Loud Sean's his idol. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Colby's the best. Though, honestly, wish him the best. Yeah, well, it, 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 if I shoot you a DM or a message or a text while you're leaving, 
that means you've done very well and I like you. There's probably a lot of people who have left who never heard from me. There's other people like, hey, I hope you do. I was like, I don't care. You're out. You're dead to me. Not negatively or positively. I'm trying to think of somebody who left. Like, oh, Mark. Mark? Yeah. No. No, business side. But like, yeah, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, he's like, oh, about, yeah. it's so great. It's like, dude, I don't freaking give a fuck. Yeah. You were here for 10 seconds. See ya. What, did you not like him or it was just no, you just No, I liked care? him. I liked him. But it's like you 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 used Barcelona's stepping stone for six months and you went to another another gig. Don't give me some spiel. I could give a fuck less. Get out. Yeah, no. Colby was great. Um, and the outpouring of support on Twitter, it's because it's he was a great dude. So That's uh, the... <laughs> what? <laughs> it's another thing that we do here. <laughs> like, a, like a video montages for people leaving. People go time. bananas when somebody leaves. It, it doesn't even matter who they are. We had like, uh, we, <laughs> you know, people here for 10 seconds and these crazy outpourings. Well, he was here for longer than we that. We got some He's... sentimental fucks in there. That's what happens when, I, when I'm not in the office. Everyone, it's Cupcake City. I mean, it's not like, like you, sentimental tears are better than like stop bullying me tears. Not for what we do necessarily. Yeah, that's that's a good point. Uh, Jeff did write. He did include you in his blog, though. He was very thankful for you as well. So uh, good. I'm, I'm sure. No, listen, works. work side of it, business side, he did a great job. And I don't know what's going on in his personal life. The man can't cry over a trivia show season one. What season can he cry? You got to have like a 10-year run. <laughs> Ten year run, couple ten years, yeah. ten seasons. Um, <laughs> it's trivia. I mean, we're talking trivia. The tank watch check was incredible. Incredible. Watched that a thousand times. Uh, did you see Stephen Chase cameo to you? Ah, uh, no. I know he did it, but I didn't watch it. Yeah, so he had a cameo to you. Showed you what he talks about. Gave everyone you was tweeting. He's like, "Burn roast." Live. What are you talking about? The Bucks and the Pats. Hey, buddy. I heard you on your podcast and you want a free cameo shout out from me, Stephen Jay. And for you, I'd be happy to oblige. Now, I appreciate you holding me accountable for the ads, which you should do. I'd like to hold you accountable for a few things you've said in the past, football related, of course. So at the end of the 2019 season, you said there was a 0.0% chance that Tom Brady would leave New England. I wanted to remind you, of course, that he did. Came to my bucks. Um... You also said, maybe in a little bit of a little sour aftertaste, that um, you guaranteed that the 2020 Patriots would win more games than the 2020 Buccaneers. That, of course, was not true. Uh yeah, he put on a Super Bowl hat. He talked about, yeah, the Pats. Hey, buddy, a little bit. Uh, so, yeah, no, I didn't watch. Yeah. So I got some. I, I, I got a number thrown at me after last week's show about uh, uh, what it's rumored that Frank the Tank is making on Cameo. How much? Guess. Hundred grand? No. More? No, less than that. Fifty? Thirty. It's pretty good. That's pretty fucking good. Yeah. Tanks is real. I'm I'm happy for the tank. Mowing down thirty K just Mets, Mets rants. It's <laughs> living the dream. Good for the tank. Yeah. No, I was uh, I was impressed with that for sure. Um Marshall Chicago, we got a new office. I'm in it right now. How is it? It's very nice. It's 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 beautiful, to be honest. It's much more than what we thought. We, we didn't want all this, but the company gave us like a screaming deal that like we basically couldn't refuse. So it's like way nicer than we thought we get and what we wanted. So it's awesome. Good. You guys earned it. Thank you. Um, Gaz, you, you getting a little Twitter spat with Casey uh, the other day? Yeah. Yeah. Because I said that I wanted to win the cup for Casey. Because she's yes. been all up in these, she was all up in the stream going bananas for her beloved Boston Bruins, mm -hmm. and then she chirped back at me, mm -hmm. saying that like, I don't know, I can't get chicks without Dave, which I don't really find it as an insult. Like your buddy, like yeah, fucking Dave has hot chicks uh, around. Like the, the the proper comeback would be, <laughs> I mean, we were out, and and my guy, Paul I, I did ask for, <laughs> I was ready to was go <laughs> standing on like the tables when the Bruins scored. That that man has watched. Zero minutes of playoff hockey. I mean, but that's, regular season but hockey. That's, so there is nobody. There's an ongoing poly playoffs. Exactly. He does it. He does it off camera. Like he, he, I mean, 
I live to, for the playoffs, man. But but it, there's nobody who actually cares less that has louder reactions than Gaz does. So that should be where the Casey comeback is because there isn't too much difference in their playoff fandom. There really isn't. I mean, that's crazy, but okay. I don't You're know. <laughs> I mean, you reacted very strongly for the Bruins, and you won't even watch. Like, the Bruins will score. You'll get stand up, and you won't even turn your head up at the TV for the next 15 minutes of, like, action. Like, you are <laughs> you are not overly – like, you're into the celebration part of it, but that's about it. Yeah, I'm not really stressing it right now like those kids were that were just in here. <laughs> no, like, you're I'm not. not really but you'll it. react with them, yeah. So that's where Casey should have come back with. Yeah. <laughs> But I, I, Casey was pl- playing into it, wasn't she? Like, like she knows she's not a Bruins fan. I don't know that. I mean, she did with the Red Sox game, too. With Red Sox. Remember, she was wearing the, the Red Sox yeah, t-shirt. Yeah, she, she does it, but I think she's self-aware at this point. I think. Did you call Did you, did you call him out on that in the moment when he was celebrating? No. 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 This is just an observation. Well, He's I mean, used to it. He sees no, it all I, time. no, I said it to him. I've ar- I said that I already I already mentioned it. I forget why, but I mean, there was nobody there. I was tweeting like they score. He's going. He's like got the towels going on a table, and I'm just tweeting out my like tweet. He likes he likes playoff hockey. Love playoffs. <laughs> Boston playoffs. That <laughs> the perfect example is that. Uh, I mean, Which he's admitted was when he went to the Red Sox game, Red Sox Dodgers in LA, and he got stuck there in that like twenty inning game and couldn't go party. But he couldn't leave because if he left, he would have gotten smoked by someone getting a video of it. But there isn't an ounce of him who wanted to be sitting there in the twentieth inning waiting for this game to end when his parties were, when his buddies are out partying. Not an inch of he's like that. He got held hot. His good intentions got held hostage. That was the second worst night of my life. After jail. That was basically being in jail for me. Yeah. Sucked. Um, Chef Donnie introduces a new series, Die Trying. Do you, yep. Do you, you, you're aware about this? You cleared off? I'm on very everything? aware. He asked for it. Um, um, he's earned the right to do try whatever he wants. So, yeah, so this is like his dozen, you're saying. So this is Yeah, right, totally. Mm-hmm. He he did the book, he's putting the work. I was never sold on him totally content-wise, but it doesn't matter anymore. He can try whatever he wants to see how it goes. Yeah, it's going to be cool. He's like doing a school bus race, I saw. He's like going to ride a bull and do a bunch of crazy action shit. I try and I got a great logo too, so. Yeah, uh, and he like did that in his past life a little bit mm-hmm. um, that I've seen, so we'll see We'll see what people think. Yeah, so That's kind of how Barca on. works. If I don't think you're great at content right off the bat, but you start doing stuff that earns you the opportunity, go for it. And that's what he did. Good, good, good for Jeff Donnie. Keep your eyes out. Uh, all right, listener emails. Can I just say something? Yeah, what's up? I want to talk about Kyrie Irving for one second. Yeah. So he got the water bottle thrown at him mm-hmm. by the 21-year-old kid. And the 21-year-old kid is getting roasted on... 97% of social media, I'd say. And then there's the racist undertones because Kyrie said Boston's racist. This is bullshit. He's charged with, like, what? Armed and, like, dangerous weapon or deadly weapon? He threw, like, a quarter-filled water bottle? Kyrie Irving is an asshole. Kyrie Irving is a cocksucker. I wrote that I hate Kyrie Irving. I've never hated a Boston athlete while he's been in Boston like him back in 2019. Sure, I'm sure there's some racist assholes. 99.9% of Boston people who fucking hate Kyrie Irving hate him because he's an asshole and a cocksucker, regardless of the color of his skin. Charging that kid for throwing a half-empty water bottle with that type of crime, they're trying to make an example, is ludicrous. And for Kyrie Irving and other players to be like, oh, fan contact. Well, if you stomp on the logo... The second before you walk out, I'm not saying that gives you the right to throw anything. It doesn't, and the kid's an idiot. But you can't have it both ways. You can't be a player and basically give the finger. That logo means a lot to people in Boston. It's like a symbol of the city. You stomp on it after being a prima donna fuckhead, and someone throws like one fucking 
quarter bottle. All right, slap the kid on the wrist and let him go. But Kyrie, you shut the fuck up. That is not a racist incident. That has nothing to do with racism. The kid was wearing a Garnett shirt. Garnett actually defended Boston. He tweeted, he put on his Instagram, he's like, yeah, people got to be better. We just going to ignore that, that fucking Kyrie stomped on the logo right before he walks out and then walks right past fans. Again, don't throw it, but it's like... Even before, he's just inciting, 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 almost like he told you they're racist. Shut the fuck up. Clip that and put that out. Clip this rant and put it out before the game today. That guy sucks. And all the media being like, typical Boston, but shut the fuck up. That Kyrie is the biggest cock who ever lived. End of rant. No, I mean, yeah. I would be mad, too, about stepping on the thing. After a blowout, and you're walking right in front of the crowd. The kid th- tosses okay. a little, didn't fucking hit him. And even if it hit him, it would have pounced off his fucking head. It's essentially a Nerf ball. You shouldn't throw it. I'm not giving, I'm, nobody should ever throw anything at a game. Put him in cuffs, hit him, fine, whatever. The charge, they're trying to make an example. But how about some, Kyrie, don't fucking do that. You're ask all you do is give the middle finger to Boston fans. You've done it since you've been here. Then you whine and moan. He's such a cock. Yeah, like I don't know how you fix that. I mean, it goes the same thing. Westbrook, someone threw popcorn at him, and that know. was an overreaction from Westbrook. Jesus Christ! It was. Now, that you was can't be unprovoked. throwing shit at these guys, though. You can't that, be I agree. Shit at that was guys. unprovoked, but it uh, unprovoked. So yes, don't throw popcorn at him. But let's not at these athletes like. I get it. You should never do it. This isn't a fan coming and stabbing Monica Sellis in the fucking ribs. This now you can say it's going to lead to it, but people always they throw batteries at Yankee Stadium, Philadelphia. They fucking threw ice balls at Santa. Like there's stupid things to do, no doubt. Didn't what's his name just get spit on at the Madison Square Garden? Yes. Yes, there was a spit, was a but I didn't, you know, I didn't hear a racist and shit like that. The, this kid, Kyrie Irving sucks, sucks. And Boston definitely has had a history of race issues. This is not one of them. This guy sucks. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. I mean, they traded like a dude that they fucking loved. And don't get me wrong, it was the right trade at the time. But people fucking loved Isaiah Thomas. You trade him, it's like, now we got Kyrie, things are on the up. And now the franchise is a fucking hole in the boat. And Kyrie Irving, people start hating here. His teammates yeah. hate him. Ex Celtics hated him. This guy sucks. Like, I get you have to make an example out of the guy. It's too much to charge, but in, but the, you can't read any more than like I don't. You should never do it. I'm never. I don't have that type of personality. But there's probably going to be a fan in almost any arena who you just get your doors blown off. This guy's talking shit. He goes unprovoked and stomps the logo, and you just like toss a bottle. Who fucking cares, honestly? Yeah, man. White Sox Dave's uncle attacked the first base coach. <laughs> well, it wasn't his uncle. I'm sorry, Dave. I apologize. <laughs> um, I just think it's – I would have liked the Celtics, and they can't. Or players be like, yeah, do exactly what KG said. Like, we all got to be better. Like, I get it. You can't do that. But are we just going to pretend he didn't fucking stomp? And everyone's like, who cares the logo? Who cares? It's a fucking plastic empty bottle. Yeah, I, I, people, like, they just ran up and down that court the whole time. It's like, I mean, listen, like, there's a reason why when po- someone puts a flag on the field, there's a reason why Baker May- Mayfield did that in Ohio State. People and, are and mad. Like, you know what totally. you're doing. You know what you're it, doing. Totally. And by the way, that logo, especially in nowadays sports, means way more to the people who live in the city and have watched the team and root for the team and live with the team and bleed with the team. Like, what do you think Borelli would do if some player stomped on the Islanders logo in front of his ass? Like, some nutkit, you're going to be fucking mad. So, like, Kyrie doesn't give a shit because he goes to a new team every year, and by the end of wherever he is, they hate his ass. So... That means people to the city. It's part of the city. It's part of the heritage. It's part of the culture. To stomp the logo in that, I, again, I'm not condoning throwing it, but, you know, actions have reactions. Not the right one, but he did that intentionally to provoke. And he provoked. Yeah. No, you're right. It has nothing to do with the color of his skin. Yeah, you're, you're right. You're, you're a thousand percent right. Um, good. That was a nice rant. I haven't seen you get a little fired up like that in a while. Yeah, I fucking hate that guy. That's good stuff. 
Uh, this one just sucks that they're so good and we're so we're not very good. Yeah, they're. I mean, they're fucking good. Uh, let's three emails. One's from Adam. Rank these employees for competence: White Sox, Dave, Smitty, and Glunny. Glenny won competence because he does everything he's asked, which is almost nothing that's important. Um, two, maybe Smitty, by default, because I just don't think White Sox Dave is competent. At all? No, not really. Like, if I needed a task done, I would trust Smitty way before White Sox Dave Glenny last, but again, I, I he's so he's so incompetent. I like it because I know not to ask him. It's like the time we <laughs> we were doing the tailgate for the Super Bowl uh, before the Patriots. Yeah, was it Super? Yeah, it was Patriots Super Bowl. Which one was it? Patriots Eagles? No, Houston. Yeah, maybe it was Patriots Eagles or Patriots Houston. I don't remember the Super Bowl, but we had like the Boston tailgate and like fifty people. I put Glenny on getting burgers and dogs. He he got one frozen burger, no buns, and one hot dog, and like no buns. No way. I was like, "What am I gonna do with this, Glenny?" And he was that supposed was to get him. a bunch. Oh yeah. He just he's like he had no clue, and they were frozen. He didn't you know he bought them the morning of, mm -hmm. like he didn't get the ones that were ready to cook. But like, uh, how do you show up with one? balls um there's one from gregory uh what do you think deke zucker has been doing without barstool radio oh good question i haven't thought about that just sitting in like a panic room probably <laughs> yeah i mean that was he was a he's he was a casualty of the serious non-renewal he was yeah that's 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 kind of sad he was i a didn't big... think of that that's i hope he's still alive like that's like you know when uh like old people one dies the next one dies like two weeks later yeah <laughs> yeah deke sucker he was great you'd hop on his feed you just you scroll down and you'd learn what happened for the day the people who are always had conspiracies he like work for us no he had nothing to do with us did you ever meet him i think i did i think i did but i can't remember a hundred percent i think it was a couple people right i, I don't know for sure but that's that I, yeah i think it was I hope, hope Deke's doing all right. Slash alive. Yeah, slash alive. Uh, this one's from Austin. What is Dave's current situation in horse racing? Who is left standing? So I have cross border. I guess I have a new horse, I think, who did, who won the other day who looked pretty good, but cross border is the main one. I've been a little out of the loop with it. I haven't been as aware, and I can't go to the Belmont this year, which sucks. I go every year with Elio, but I'm going to be in Miami for this fight. Are you going to do Saratoga? Yeah, I'll go to Saratoga this year when it's back on. At some point? Yep. All right, so just cross-border, possibly one more. Yep. Uh, this one's from Gaurav. Uh, why does Dave include several spaces between sentences in his tweets? It's like he's going to town on the space bar. Because that <laughs> is uh, like proper typing. When you're taught it, my mother, also a typing teacher, no big deal. When you type, the way you're correctly supposed to do it is... Put in the spaces. That's they, that's go do research on grammar and typing. That's how you're supposed to do it. That's how I was taught to do it. Everyone comments on it. It's even if I tried to have like burners or whatnot, it would never work because I can't unlead that. So the double space just gives it away. But yeah, a lot of people notice that. Uh, you know, like if I if I'm ever texting somebody younger. It's a surefire sign they think that I'm old, that I do that. I don't think so. I don't think anybody does except me, but that's the way it's taught. I totally thought it was an old thing. But no one else does it. Oh, like parents do it for sure. Do they? Oh, yeah. So you consciously put all those spaces like that? No, not consciously. It's just, no. It's just how I do it unconsciously. It's how it's taught. Wow. I did not expect this answer. What'd you think it was? I thought you were just like, you just fucking think of the next word. And when you're thinking of the next fucking word to write, you just keep fucking going hammer time on the space bar. No, I don't think at all how I, I mean, I just text nor I don't, it's not like, oh, I'm doing it a certain way. I just do it. And that's always seems to be how it comes out. You think, you, will you correct this at some point? No. No? 
<laughs> no. It definitely has like dad vibes, like when you're te- like when you're texting a dad. Totally. Like you could be twenty years younger, and it still would almost read off as like you're texting like your dad. Yeah. That's- it is what it is. I'm, I'm stunned that you think this is like the right way to do it. I know it is. Look it up. Have you Proper ever used an, grammar and punctuation? Do you use emojis, Dave? Yep. Oh yeah, he does. What does that mean? Yeah, well, do. I meant like in text. What like, does that mean? What does that mean? What do you mean? What does that mean? You that was like a snide <laughs> comment. You use emojis. I know. Yeah, yeah, he yeah, does. Come on, chicken. I, you I, use emojis. I just looked up. <laughs> I, ju- uh, I just uh, looked up where this came from, uh, Dave. You're you're right, but it's actually typewriting class. Typewriters. That's where. That's this what I just fucking said. Type from like typewriters, like the those. My mother was a typing teacher. <laughs> like not typing on a computer, typewriter. I type like. <laughs> and then the thing goes <laughs> back, and it's. <laughs> it's like the typewriters. Do you use typewriters, <laughs> dude? What? Do you use typewriters? You, we had typewriting class. When, what, what do you call when you type on a computer? Yeah, but, no, but this that? is the actual physical. What do you call it when you type on a computer? <laughs> what do you mean? Typing. 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 Yes. But we're talking I about- took a you, computer class. They teach you how to type. Double spaced. That's proper grammar. I'm getting my ass fucking, uh, what's the word? My ass chewed out here for typing properly. Now, now I'm stunned that you used a typewriter in it. Like, <laughs> What are you talking about? It's from a typewriter. You know what I'm talking about? Like the different generational thing? I didn't thing? learn how to type on a typewriter. I learned how to type on a computer. For, confirmed? Yeah, computer class. All right. Seems- I have used a typewriter, though. <laughs> All right, last question here. Uh, what happened to Barstool Beats? Will you ever bring it back? Tommy smokes. Zolo, Tommy smokes. Zolo. <laughs> yeah, that was Tommy. that was a Tommy Tommy Zolo gig. Tommy lights. What's crazy is I don't know how long ago, years ago, somebody reached out and we had been done with Beats forever, and he's like, "There's some sort of dispute between Tommy Lights and this other kid who owns Barcel Beats and this." And I'm like, "I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Like, I could care less about it, it was a Tommy Lights project." I don't think it would ever work. I think we were probably doing shit illegally with it. But, yeah, it was a Tommy Lights project. Well, it could be incorporated with Spotify playlists and whatnot now if you did it. But I, I don't even know. It was, do you, uh, do you get a line on Zolo? What? Do you, do you know where Zolo's at? Do you got a- Yeah, he's like uh, the manager. Or at least he was for some DJ Elefante, I think, or something at one point. I don't know if he still is. He's, so he's actually in grad school in New York. Uh, I re- had to write him a recommendation letter not too long ago. Yeah, he got accepted into like one of the nice like uh, NYU or something grad school. He's in New York City. Nice. Yeah, he's a, he's a lifetime play the system guy. That's Har- what Harvard I'm coming. Guy. He, Harvard. He's in grad school, Harvard, just playing the system. He was a D. He worked for us. He's not doing traditional Harvard stuff. We should get him on. That'd be interesting. Tommy Lights. Yeah. Dante almost killed him one time. Why? <laughs> I think the Roseland. I think Tommy room. Lights cut his music at the end. Of it was show. Uh, when you. It was curfew, and he Dante kept playing, and Zola just cut it at one o'clock or something because like curfew was like you'd get charged up the ass if you went a minute longer, and they got into it in the green. Room. They were jaw to jaw. Uh, I forget where it was. Ro- Roseland but, Ballroom. I mean, Roseland Ballroom, in New York City. Woo! Were they wow. going at it? Wow. The Don versus Tommy Lights. Dante the Don. Can we get that remember, as a highlight for Rough and Rowdy? The Don on this show. That's a good guy to have. Do you remember the Don uh, Hodford Civic Center? Is that where we were? The Civic Center? <laughs> yeah. Well, which, when he went to take a piss? No, when he blew the blew speakers. The speaker. We had no sound for the whole concert. He, that was awesome. 3,000 people. He blew the speakers <laughs> five seconds in. And he's like, these people don't know how to do a show. And the, the people run it. They're like, we had a Vici here last week. It's like, <laughs> but the, everywhere we went, the, the music people said the Don tried to blow their speakers. Literally, it was like you could set your watch to it. The, the lifetime venue people being like, your DJ is blowing our speakers. 
the dawn being like these people have never had a concert. We're in places that had major concerts. I always sided with the venue. They're like, they have concerts here every week. Why does everywhere we go say the dawn is blowing their speakers? We played Hartford Civic Center. You could only hear the music in the first row. So we just foamed the fuck out of people. <laughs> Just keep foaming them. Yeah. How was uh, the differences between the the blackout and the machine gun Kelly? The blackouts were crazier because yeah. people are just standing. This was a true concert. Mm -hmm. The blackouts were just shit shows. Yep. In the age difference, I mean, you could be eighteen and go to a true. blackout tour. These were twenty one up at, in Indiana. Yeah, that's a big difference. Yeah. <laughs> Zolo probably has some good stories about you too, Dave. If I had to imagine. Yeah, probably more gas. They like they're on the road that the the whole purple starfish group. Mm -hmm. Purple starfish, yeah. No, yeah, and, and Mo went at him pretty hard one time too. That's a legendary moment. Yeah, Barstool history. Um, all right, email your questions, Dave Portnoy Show at BarstoolSports dot com. Go get them in. We can start doing those more again. Uh, all right, anything else, Dave? No, I think that's it. All right. Uh, Chicken, you have a nice week. Um, we that will... was a low blow with that one. <laughs> why who is that one? You know what? <laughs> All right. That's it. Everybody have a nice week. We'll be back next week. We will see you then. Uh, yeah, we'll see you then. All right. Later. Later.